Hello everyone, Joanne Fastoff here. Just in case you're wondering, I'm in my combat mode today because I wanna to talk to you about the five reasons not to quit writing, okay? So today you might need something maybe a little stronger than wine just to digest what I'm gonna say. Okay, here we go. So. There are five reasons why I think you shouldn't quit writing. See, writing is a lot of work. It isn't impossible, but it takes time and God. It needs a lot of focus. So, you know, if you have family, if you have a full-time job, if you have children, if you have an ill parent or a spouse or a partner, writing at this time might not be the right time for you. Now, the reason why I say this is because you might not be able to capture all your focus because all your focus is on all these things I just mentioned. But then again, in case you say you really want to write, this might be the time. Okay, here we go. Number five, you are the race. Refrain from comparing yourself to others who have already succeeded in writing. I am not James Baldwin or Alice Walker or Shakespeare. And you know what? That's okay because I'm Joanne Fastoff and I too have something to say. I have a lot of information to impart. Now, do I care that more than 50,000 people don't know my name? Yeah, you know I do, but I'm still plugging along. And see, that's not gonna stop me from writing and helping you out. Some authors you know very well and were discovered, and when I say discovered, I mean like they were discovered in their fifth or their 10th book. However, they continued and fought for their success. Now, if you expect to be a bestseller in a week after publishing your book, don't start writing. It won't happen. And that's when authors quit. Number four, patience and resilience are two biggies. There's a process for my writing. I love to write. When my house is empty, I sit at my computer with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a glass of wine, and I always read again the last chapter I wrote. I always look at my outline, and then I attempt to write the next section. Now, I try not to edit as I go along. You know, sometimes I get in a funk, I get up, I take a shower. Remember that shower, Jean? Everybody's got one. So it's something about a cold shower, I don't know. Something brings it to the surface. See, the myth of the starving artist is a dangerous one and should not be romanticized, even a little. Now, do I wanna quit writing because I haven't made a lot of money that I envisioned myself making in my so-called second career? Hell yes, but it hasn't stopped me from writing. And the reality is that most authors have to work hard for years before they see any success. And success takes a lot of work. A lot of writers sweat it to get where they are so that you know their name. But many times they face the decision to quit or not to quit. I know you don't believe that because they're so famous, but they didn't start big. You also have to consider, why are you writing? Because you enjoy it or because you just want to be rich? Money ain't going to appear overnight, folks, and not ever without a lot of work, no matter how fast you think your book is getting published. Now, please note, you need marketing. It is vital. You will quickly discover that it takes more time to market your book than to actually have written or edited. And that's why many authors would rather just quit writing than spend time arguing. Number three, accept what you believe is a failure and move on. Remember, I told you I received 44 no letters from literary agents. You have to persevere. You've got to say to yourself, if this is a failure, okay, then I've hit bottom. Hey, I hit bottom starting. Now let's move on. Too often, authors think the reviewers know best, and then they quit. And just because some reviewers didn't like your work doesn't mean you should stop writing unless you want to. Remember, we're talking about writing, not performing brain surgery, not performing heart surgery. It's not that serious. And stepping away does not mean you're quitting. It merely says you're fashioning a more meaningful and honest assessment of your work. Think about it this way. 
Who else in your household is paying the rent or mortgage or making the car payments and insurance? If it's only you, you should check other outlets around writing that can be deemed more financially beneficial. Here's a list of the 10 most popular types of writing jobs without being a novelist. Blogging, copywriting, medical journalist, technical, freelance, content, resume, grant, and proposal writing. They're all writing jobs. Consider a career as a communications director, a speech writer, a screenwriter, a columnist, a book editor, a public relations specialist. A good friend of mine is a translator, and that might sound boring to some of you, but guess what? That side hustle of hers pays her mortgage. Author and Nobel Prize winner T.S. Eliot kept his bank clerk job after publishing The Wasteland. He subsequently found another day job at a publishing house to bring stability into his life. The famous cartoonist and author Scott Adams kept his job at Pacific Bell for seven years after his comic strip was publicized and syndicated, meaning all the newspapers in the United States carry his strip. Margaret Atwood, Franz Kafka, Harper Lee, Toni Morrison, John Steinbeck, and Kurt Vonnegut all kept their day jobs until they hit gold with literary success. See, these big names show that when you don't quit your day job right away, you can often achieve a balance of stability and a risk that pays off. Number two, you have to be remarkable and not mediocre. Only some reviewers are gonna like your writing. You can only please some of them. And unfortunately, the negative reviews are the ones that stick in our brain. I believe some of my bad reviews have helped me tremendously. I don't like them, but I keep them because bad reviews come with the territory. When I wrote my first novel, The Gordian Knot, I didn't know that seven books would follow. And when The Gordian Knot was sitting on my bookcase staring at me, I thought one book might be considered a fluke. Then my character talked to me and made me realize I had other stories to tell. I took the chance. So now it's a series. Imagine that. Later, I was granted the opportunity to meet one of my literary heroes, Walter Mosley, who told me, work your character until he's tired. You are the race. You are your competition. Nobody else. If you've ever golfed or if you ever shot pool, you know that you're playing against the course or the table, not the other player. You are the race. You have to have patience because if you think your book is going somewhere tomorrow and published today, think again. Stick with your job. Stick with what you do best. The money will come, okay? The product is what's needed. Accept what you believe is a failure and move on. Some can't move on, and that's probably part of your life. Be remarkable and not mediocre. Don't do anything half-ass. It's not so much about the content you're writing about. It's about being half-ass telling that story. Be remarkable, not mediocre. Look at your manuscript twice. Cross the T's, dot the I's. Number one, this is the hardest for new writers to absorb thoroughly and I can't be more straightforward. Believe in you. Now, maybe you should ask yourself, do I have something to say? This makes writing easier. It isn't easy when you have buckled under the naysayers around you telling you it can't be done. It can't work. It's not a good idea. Too much dialogue, too little story, too little book, not enough long words, not enough big words, blah, 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 blah. But if you're persevering, the blessed you will finish the book, the play, the miniseries, or the film, okay? It's beneficial to start with something real. Shakespeare said, if you write what you know, you could write forever. Hope you like that. So, how to deal with rejection? If you keep writing because your work was rejected, you're just looking for an excuse to stop writing. Everybody gets rejected in some form daily. Ask any man. Now, if most of the reviewers come up with the same critiques about your work, you might want to tweak your stuff a little bit, but continue believing in yourself. If you believe in yourself, you don't have to worry about anybody else believing in you because they will believe in you because you believe in yourself. Now, what do you remember? 
What are the two words you don't want to hear? Who said how time flies another 10 days and I've achieved nothing? Overcoming what is part of the process of reaching your goals? Five reasons not to quit. What's number one? And why do we need marketing? I hope you enjoyed this. Next week, we'll talk about editing. Hey, you can always pick up my booklet, How to Write Stuff Better. Just go to my website, www.joannefastalk.com and get my book downloaded for free, okay? And then next week, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Until then, have a wonderful week.